Welcome back to Rick Reviews Video Games, where I, Rick, review video games. Up today, we kind of got a special episode. It's going to be me and my buddy, Beach, and we're going to be talking about a game that we decided to play this week. Welcome, Beach. hey oh, Thanks, Rick. Hey, guys, this is Beach, Your buddy, my buddy, me buddy. Let's do it. Rick, what are we doing this week? What did we do? Why am I here? On Monday, we were chatting. You had mentioned that there was a game coming up on Xbox Games with Gold, and that game was free, and it was called Made of Skur. Did I get that right? Dude, past VJ is so smart, coming up with this idea. Yeah, Made of Skur. So we decided that we would rush through a play and get it done by yesterday, and then we would do some recording today, and this would be just a little more free flow conversation, less set up scripted review like I normally do. Made of Skur. Not related to the novel of the same name, which I did look up. Oh. From 1872. Has nothing to do with it. So, like, this is not a shout out to that novel. Are you sure it has nothing to do with it? I totally looked it up. Like, Wikipedia had nothing to do with it. In Made of Skur, you take on the role of Thomas Evans, a, I don't know, maybe not so notable composer. I think he's semi-notable inside of the story, but I don't know that it really goes much further than his immediate circle. Yeah, that sounds right. Yeah, I feel like he's a composer in the sense that his friends know that he doesn't have another job, and he's just like, oh yeah, oh, it's your music again. Gotcha, Tommy. Good job. Thanks a lot, man. Appreciate it. Isn't every musician a little like that? Hey, I represent that comment. Looking at you, Morella. Ah, <laughs> uh, that Morella. Yeah. She's one of the eight listeners that I have. And actually, that brings me to a point. You're still going to have to watch this video, even though you're in it, because I don't want to lose a tenth of my audience. (laughs) It's true. Like, well, listen, we'll just I'll just ask your mom to watch it twice. I'll be like, hey, it's a good call. Be like, hey, Bryce, why don't you watch this again? Just get a good laugh out of it. Maybe your mom could watch it. Uh, Dude, my mom doesn't watch any of the junk that I'm in. Are you are you kidding me? She's got standards. Fair enough. How about your dad? No, he'll watch it for sure. Yeah, he has no standards. None whatsoever. Good. Okay, so, (laughs) all this shenanigans aside, in Made of Skur, you take on the role of Thomas Evans, as we said, and it's in 1897, where you receive a letter from your, I don't know, fiancé, maybe? That was what I kind of went with. Yeah, and her name is Elizabeth something or other. Very unique last name. I called her Bethy. Okay, yeah, that works. So, you get this letter from Elizabeth, and you take the train out to her family's hotel, which is on... Maybe like a little island. All I know is that there is a lighthouse and ships go by. And that is not important to the storyline whatsoever. I thought it was Skur Island in the nation of Skur. If it's Skur Island, why the hell do you have this railroad? All, All islands have railroads, Rick. God. Do they? No. Uh, well, that that is the most scenic way to get to Hawaii is by riding the train, of course. The Amtrak oh, goes yeah. straight there. And it's gorgeous. It's an amazing view. Beautiful trip. It takes seven years, but it is gorgeous. Yeah. Train on top of a freighter. Oh, yeah, that's cool. <laughs> I like that. That's a good way to go. So as you get there, it's like creepy right from the get-go. Straight what up. What the hell is this guy doing? Atmosphere. Very beginning of the game. You're walking. Through, it is all sunny out. It's pretty. And it's like. Gorgeous. You need to go to this hotel, but the road's closed. Why don't you take this sidetrack? No, I'm not going to this hotel. Like, what a terrible idea. Like, first off, game has a terrible premise because there's no way I'm leaving the trail. Like, I can see the hotel straight up the path. Why would I go the other way? I already took the train all the way here. And then like 10 seconds in on this pathway, you see that like. I don't know, ethereal light tentacle thing. Yeah. And it shoots up in the sky. I'd be like, nope, I'm out. Peace. Uh, Yeah. Like, fuck out of here. Yeah. It's also like 1897. Why the hell are you traveling without a gun? Treating it like it's 2016 America. Like, you should be treating it like it's 2020 America and everybody needs a gun at all times for everything. It's true. Once you actually do get to the hotel and you open the door, there's a giant blood stain and you decide... I'm going to go ahead and keep going in and answer this phone. Obviously, obviously this dude couldn't cut it as anything except for a musician because he's too stupid, right? Absolutely. I was, that was the very first thought. I was like, I see that blood stain on the floor. I keep seeing that blood. I walk in, I see the blood stain. I'm like, me, Beej, the dude who's talking? Uh Uh-uh. Out. Nunzo. Want none of that. Thomas? Keeps on going. The dude is nuts. How, How far into the game was it before you end up 
getting really creeped out. I think it took like an hour of gameplay before you got your first mask man like showing up. And but it was built on this fear. It was and it wasn't even built on um jump scares. It was built on just a very atmospheric scent. One thing I will I will say and I will probably say this repeatedly, the sound design in this game was just tops so so good and that's really what made that work like you'd be you'd be walking through the hotel looking at stuff everything's dark like first off the fact that you have constant lens flare on your screen meaning you can only see half of everything that's going on or as if your screen had been smeared with vaseline that made it more difficult to you already couldn't see anything so the sound design was so good that it just really led you through and set the scene it kept this very atmospheric uh dread as you walked went through the entire place and then every once in a while you'd have like the sound of children smacking the keys of a piano or maybe that was thomas trying to play because perhaps he's not a very good musician i don't know yeah i i think that that actually raises a good question. Are you saying that you don't put Vaseline on your TV? Well, I do when I'm trying to get some extra speed when I'm taking it TV bobsledding. Common activity where I grew up. I actually thought this game, very similar to your thoughts, right? It's an atmosphere. There's not so much jump scare or these imminent threats, but it is the feeling that a threat is around the corner. And I think that you, as the protagonist, being kind of this everyman, portrayed in your character, right? You're not strong. You're not fast. You're not durable. You're kind of this, you know, just everyday dude. But I kind of got a feeling, though, he's a little tall and a little gangly, just from, like, the way you approach things. You said you feel like you're really up there, right? Agreed. Completely agreed. You're you're a little tall, you're a little gangly, you walk really slow. That's very much like if you want to look at the, the difference, your gameplay is much more of like a clock tower than it is a Resident Evil. You're not a trained fighter. You're just a person going through who now has to deal with this situation, which in reality for like survival horror that's the scarier stuff uh very amnesia-esque except you can actually affect your world versus something like a resident evil or the later silent hill games where you actually have some fighting skills and this you have no fighting skills until you have the device and that's not even a fighting skill it's just a uh hold up why don't you hide for a moment yeah no for sure i also kind of get the feeling that uh thomas is asthmatic you know, because one of the mechanics is is you're trying to not make noise, so you have to hold your breath. The dude could only hold his breath for about 10 seconds before he's gasping for air, like he just ran a marathon in a world record time. And then when he does have to run, it's about 100 feet, and he's like, all right, I'm done. Like, I can't keep running. I'm just so tired. I have to gasp for air. Mm -hmm. Oh, exactly. <laughs> you know, I, you did say that it, it's not the type of game that has jump scares, but... There is at least one jump scare, and it was really good. And I'm the type of person who loves jump scares. Like, I, I'll i do the, ah! You will, it's adorable. Yeah, and then I, but then I start cracking up because I just think it's hilarious. But this one came at a very unfortunate time. It was at 5 in the morning when I was playing before my wife, Megan, not BJ's wife, Megan. We're both married to Megan's. Uh, she was still sleeping, and I was like, ah! Was it when you took the bird key, when you tried to grab the bird key? No, it was the before you get pushed down the well. Oh, yeah. And I don't want to ruin it in case anybody's playing, because it's a very specific lead up. Um, also, there was there was a twist that I was like, oh, saw that come in a whole way through. But then there was a double twist, which means I was wrong. And I was like, oh, it's stiff snap, stiff snap, stiff snap. No idea the physical toll the three vasectomies have on a person. <laughs> when they did occur, they fit really nicely. There was few of them because the entire game was terrifying. With the first time you have an open room and you have a whole bunch of masked men in there and you're just trying to get that gate open and you're going back and forth and it takes you 10 minutes to traverse this room back and forth to be able to do this. I was, my heart was pounding. Uh, the wife came in. She's like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, leave me alone. I'm playing a video game. Trying to figure out how to get through this room. I'm too scared. 
and it was amazing. I had my, my headphones on. Like, play this game with your headphones on for sure, though. Like, I'll say this. Like, uh, uh, circumnarl hearing is will save you so good. Like, being able to hear stuff behind you. Once you open that jack-in-the-box, and then later you end up in that room. Ooh. I I, that was when I decided I had to wear headphones because I couldn't tell where the sound was coming from from just my sound bar. So I had to put on the headphones so that I could find my way out of that room because otherwise I just kept running into the darkness and would die. Yeah, that was... I, I did die once in that darkness and I did not appreciate it. I think I died like seven times <laughs> before I put on the headphones. <laughs> I had to do it. It was ridiculous. I had the headphones on early because I liked to. I had it turned way up. See, you play at 5 a.m. While, while your wife is asleep. I play at 10 p.m. when my wife is asleep. So, did you have any gripes with the game, or was it all pretty rosy for you? I thought the pacing on it was a little weird for parts of it. Like, I thought there was some, there was some additional spots. Having played a bunch of video games, especially games that are similar to this, such as, like, Amnesia, Outlast, uh, I felt like the pacing on it was a little weird. They made some interesting choices in how often to throw challenge rooms at you and how to leave them out at other places. Like, I would have liked a little bit more... I would have liked a little more challenge to some of the challenge rooms. Like, perhaps have another one where it was a big open space where you really had to go maneuvering about through cra almost crowds of them. I think there's just some places where they really could have tightened it up and made it a little more intense. I think there was some let down stuff that could have been a little bit hard, could have been a little bit harsher. Yeah, I think the things that kind of bothered me were maybe a little bit smaller, but also just a little more irksome. I just thought it was a bit of an inconsistent world. Yeah, I can see that. You know, there was like making the counter song. What the hell is a counter song? How do you counteract another song? That's so weird. And how did, how, how did you figure that out? Was the dog a ghost, or was the dog real? Your dad, or not your dad, but maybe your soon-to-be father-in-law? Yeah. Uh, was he a ghost, or was he real? Well, like that one scene in the end where he's, like, walking around, then all of a sudden he's at the And he's playing piano? Yeah. I feel like he's, like, a record. Or he's the phonograph. He's actually, like, the embodiment of the cylinders for the phonograph, where they would skip, and that's when he would be... He was walking around when it would skip. It would play normal, and then it would skip back, and that's where he was. So his his visage is just like kind of everything else. It's built with the music. Perhaps it was built into the the same uh, structure, I guess, as one of those cylinders. Yeah, that's brain. I don't know. That's that's, <laughs> that's brain talk, that's baby. So extra textual. That's that's way outside the. You're coloring way outside the lines here, dude. What line are we? What line have I ever tried to stay inside of? Haven't you seen my clearly defined boundaries for my YouTube channel, where I have four videos and seven viewers? You mean the video that you made me watch over and over and over again, being like, "Dude, did I say this one right?" I'm like, yes, I do remember your very strict guidelines. Look, I have well-established tropes here. Okay, there's four videos. Four. Four. I have seen, I feel like you have 60 videos because of how many times I've had to watch those four. I gotta get that view counter up. I have so many YouTube accounts now just so that I can get your get your numbers up, my friend. <laughs> have you played any games like this, Rick? Is this sort of a, is this kind of a, kind of a, um, a singular game for you? No, I mean, I've played horror games. But yeah. Uh, they're not my go-to, but th I guess this kind of reminds me of... The enemy within. There's a lot of fighting in the enemy within. Is there? Yeah. Okay. Maybe it was disturbed. It it had like a green monster on the front cover, and you were in a mental asylum, and you were trying to hide from amnesia. Amnesia dark. It's amnesia two dark or amnesia dark descent, not amnesia um, machine for machine machine for pigs or whatnot. And then the newest one, which just came out, amnesia. Hey, that's been 15 years since the last one. I mean, it could be amnesia, but I don't really remember. It was like. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. You, Rick, you clever, you clever girl. I know, I'm so clever. Clever girl. That was so good. <laughs> that, was, that was very good. I was very proud of you. Um, also, I was just thinking, we should probably just change this. Like, I thought this. I enjoyed playing this game 
like with you and us kind of chatting about it every time. So I'm thinking we should just change this whole format of this little show that you do. And we should change it to Rick Reviews scary video games and then you and i just play scary video games every week and then we meet up on fridays and we talk about it for everyone else yeah i mean we can definitely do that sometimes but i want to play more than just scary video games what how dare you sir (laughs) yeah um so i don't think i've told you this yet and this is a preview for for my mom and my brother and maybe my dad and devin and morella but i'm playing a game called (laughs) that is oh man it is a tearjerker. I, it's called That Dragon Cancer. Have you heard of this? Uh-uh. It's a true story, and it was made by the parents who had a one-year-old who was diagnosed with terminal cancer. It's intense. It's raw. Um, this is not a review for that game, because I will review that. But I played the first hour of that game, and I just cried like the whole time my face was just red my eyes were swollen i mean like full-on eyes in the palm of my hands <laughs> just blubbering it is it's intense as a longtime rick fan and rick friend uh i can say i'm shocked you're not crying just telling me about your experience in playing this game for a little bit not even describing the game just describing yourself playing the game i'm surprised you're not bawling just doing that yeah i i can see that (laughs) but you know to be fair i don't cry at anything other than movies and video games and if I'm really tired, maybe a commercial. Yeah, I have watched you cry <laughs> at a lot of commercials. <laughs> Perhaps you're exceptionally yeah. tired all the time. But like, I, other than that, I don't. And so, like, when I when I started to play this, I was like, you know what? I could use getting cracked open a little bit here. Yeah. And then I, I like that. I was like pretty weepy the rest of the day. Like, and I was like, maybe I cracked myself too open. <laughs> on this, <laughs> that's fair. So on this, what did you like more? So. uh... The game has, well, without spoiling, what did you like more, the good or bad ending? <laughs> um, you know, the bad ending was pretty tragic. It was so sad. I was like, <laughs> I was like man, that's pretty jacked up, dude. so sad. Like, what the hell? Uh, I mean, the good ending was fine. I really, Whatever. I really liked the bad ending because it was so bad. I felt like it really fit sort of the... Well, you're a sick bastard. It's true. Very true, but also, my name is Beach Snow, by the way. Just <laughs> Well, actually, I'm from Seattle, so it'd be Beach Rain uh, would be my, my element. But, uh, yeah, I really liked that bad ending. I thought it was I thought it really fit the tone of the game. Yeah, it was, it was pretty cool. So, like for it. anybody playing, when you get to the ending, pick the one that I chose. And then <laughs> do the other one, because it's just a save point. Like, it'll save you beforehand, so you can actually just yeah. do them both back-to-back without even thinking about it. Yeah, that's pretty nice. I normally rate, rate things on a 0 to 10 scale, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and if it's below 6, I just don't play it or I quit. Yeah. Um, it's a it's a very but, handy um, scale. Um, okay, so I'm going to I'm going to Yeah, give me a um, get roll out the red carpet here, right? We got a whole new scale just for today's unique style video. We're going to have a unique rating system. So I want to know what you rate this on a scale from zero to pants shitting. Zero to what do you give pants it? shitting. Ooh. Um, I would call it three jumps away from a turtle head. Oh, okay. So like that's pretty if the, that's pretty close to a full shit. Yeah, it's pretty good. Like if, if if it had had like a couple more little things really sort of get me there. Like if there was a point where I had to swim through any sort of opaque water or liquid or something like we would have turned it into like on a scale on just a fear scale we would have found like if there was a scene where i had to swim through water that i couldn't see the bottom of and perhaps you got dunked once but then kept going followed by a uh a scene where i had to perhaps perform or get stuck into a small room and like, or had to crawl through a cave and get stuck in there for a little bit, then I would have absolutely shit my pants. But on a scale from zero to pants shitting, I say I'm like three good scares away from from that turtle head. So I feel like it's a, okay. I really enjoy. I'll say, in in my terms, like on on my scale of one to ten, I'm gonna say I really enjoyed it. Okay. Yeah. That's good. That's good. I like that. Yeah. I like scale that. of one to ten. I say it was pretty good. That's good. That's good. What about you? It sounds pretty good. 
Where would you add? Uh, I would give it a spooky. Spooky. On a, With a K. Yeah, on a scale from zero to pants shitting, I'd give it a spooky. Nice. So three O's, mm-hmm. one K. I think it was. I think it was scarier than games like Outlast. Outlast was just built on jump scares. Outlast was the one I played. I think. Yeah, it has the naked the looked- naked scientist is chasing you everywhere. You played Outlast. I think so. I think it was free on was. PlayStation Plus, mm-hmm. like when PlayStation first came out. Mm-hmm. And so I think that's when I played it. I played one and two on Xbox. Um, I liked Made of Skur a lot more than that, than the Outlast games, because they were built so much on jump scares. And while I like jump scares, I really love atmospheric horror. Awesome. I feel like it's more effective. Well, let's, uh, let's go ahead and try to close this out. So one of the things I like to do, as you've heard, is I like to always present a value added so that it's not just like, hey, here's the score of the game, but also try to tilt it towards people who maybe have different rating systems or enjoy different types of games. So I like to try to say, hey, if you like this type of game, you might like this. So like I would say, if you like spooky games where there is a intense aura of danger, then this might be for you. Who would you recommend this game to? Uh, I would recommend this game to anybody who loves dissecting sound. Like, if you like really intense, creative use of sound design, if you're somebody who finds the terror and or enjoyment just in any sort of emotional out- outburst like that. Also, if you're uh, the type of person who just likes to who just likes to get scared, like this is a this is a good one for you. I had a thought i had a better way to say that but yeah if you like but you probably don't no i don't i know you. <laughs> uh, you probably don't i'd probably just repeat the same things over and over again until they <laughs> until they sound right uh <laughs> i i would say if you not just if you like horror games but if you if you like uh, a good experience if you want a game that you're gonna think about afterwards if you want a game that makes you think that perhaps you're not the only thing that's disappointing your father-in-law like then this is a good game for you if you're like you know what awesome. i think my soon-to-be wife is also disappointing my father-in-law then it's really for you you'd be like you know what i like that i think we fit we fit well together yeah yeah i i, I agree with most of that i mean some of it was stupid Mm -hmm. but that's just you so that's me that's uh, me baby i get it no worries (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that about wraps everything up i'd like to say thank you to beach for joining me today also thank you for watching please hit the like button it looks like beach has something he wants to say scream at that subscribe button make sure that you with a trembling finger click that uh alerts the bell so that you know anytime that rick puts up one of these one of his little videos and you get to hear about (laughs) you get to hear about what he has to say like it's hit the slap it scream at it make it happen just don't leave this don't leave this video to be your only interaction with rick otherwise you're probably going to be happier and with that we'll just catch you next time Have a happy Halloween. Goodbye.